Today on Psychology 101, we'll be discussing the big debate that is nature versus nurture. While nature is the biological predisposition, the genes that you're born with, nurture is the upbringing or how you're raised. So the competing ideas are that who we are is based on either how we're raised or how we're born. Either we inherit it from our parents or we learn it from our upbringing. The ancient philosopher Plato believed that we inherit most of our characteristics and intelligence from our parents. While Aristotle believed that we come into this world bare and everything we get is from our environment and our upbringing. Nature and nurture have been in combat for hundreds of years, with no one giving an, a complete understanding of what actually is going on. But it wasn't until the late 1800s that the voyager Charles Darwin published a book called The Origin of Species, in which he discussed the concept of natural selection. Natural selection is the idea that nature selects specific traits to allow an organism to survive. But Darwin believed that his theory wasn't limited to just biological traits, such as the length of a giraffe's neck, but also to psychological traits, such as emotions like anger or lust. One method that modern psychologists use to study the differences between nature and nurture is by looking at different cultures and ethnicities. By looking at what makes us similar, we can also determine what makes us different based upon the environment. We can compare the natural genetic traits that each human holds in common, and then also the social and ethnic differences that make us who we are. Another method that modern psychologists use to study the difference between nature and nurture is twin studies. Since identical twins seem to have the same genetic makeup, they're ideal participants to study hereditary and environmental influences on their behavior. Overall, though, psychologists agree that you can't have one without the other. Nature will always grab and mold who a person is, but nurture will always rough out the edges. Most of us are born a certain way, but environment does influence us based upon our upbringing and where we live. Now, I can understand if you're a hardcore naturalist or nurturist and you want your due credit. Psychologists have developed a three-pronged method of analysis called the biopsychosocial approach, in which we analyze from multiple perspectives how a phenomenon occurs, whether it's biologically induced, psychologically, or socioculturally. The first level of analysis is called biological, in which you look at the genetic predispositions or the adaptive traits that an individual has. As long as I can remember, I've always liked spicy food. It could be that I was born with a genetic predisposition towards spicy food, or that my mother ate spicy food when I was in utero. The next level of analysis is called psychological, in which we look at learned behaviors and emotions. If a child throws a tantrum every time he wants something and he's rewarded, then he's always going to believe that's the way to get what he wants. This is a learned behavior that explains his specific actions in life. And lastly, the third level of analysis is social and cultural, in that your ethnicity, your peer group, and even the media influences your behaviors. Since a young kid, my parents have always told me that I have to hug my relatives when they come over. This is a cultural influence on my behavior, expectations from my parents that I've learned to incorporate into who I am. Since one behavior cannot be explained solely by a biological influence, it's important to look at both the psychological and the sociocultural as well. The point to remember here is that each method of analysis, whether it's biological, psychological, or social, is important in understanding the influences for a behavior. But it's not until you combine all of them that the whole picture becomes clear. In this video, we discussed the big debate in psychology, nature and nurture, and some methods that modern psychologists use to understand the differences between the two. We also talked about the biopsychosocial approach, in that as important as each one is in understanding behavior, it's not until you combine all three of them that you can understand the whole picture. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other ones, such as the history of our definition of psychology. And keep a lookout for future ones in which we talk about concepts and theories in our Psych 101 segment.